James Clerk Maxwell wanted to propose a series of experiments that would prove whether or not an ether existed through which light was propagating. If there was such a thing as an ether, it defined an absolute rest frame and all velocities could be measured with respect to that ether. He supposed that the solar system moves through the ether as sort of astronomical speed similar to the Earth's speed moving around the Sun, which was known to be about 20,000 meters per second or 20 kilometers per second. The question then remained, could one do a measurement of light propagating relative to the ether using light going against the ether or light going with the ether and observing a slight shift in the speed of light? We again suppose that the solar system moves at approximately the same speed as Earth around the Sun, 20 kilometers per second. If light would approach the Earth both from upstream in the ether or from downstream in the ether, it would slightly shift in speed because of the Galilean addition of velocities relative to the ether. Things coming from upwind would be moving at speed v plus c relative to earth, and things coming from downwind would be moving at speed v minus c relative to earth. Maxwell contacted David Todd at the U.S. Almanac office from the Navy for astronomical data recorded over a number of years. The data that Maxwell sought concerned the, the eclipse of, or the data of the data that Maxwell sought concerned the orbit of Jupiter's moon Io, recorded over a number of years. Romer had used the speed of, or had measured the speed of light using the time it took for Io to go through an eclipse around J Jupiter and then return. In other words, Romer had used the orbit of Io around Jupiter to measure the speed of light. As Io goes in orbit behind Jupiter, its, its view from Earth is blocked, and we would say it goes into eclipse. The amount of time for that eclipse is roughly constant because the orbit period of Io around Jupiter is constant. Romer did eclipse measurements at two different times. Once, when Earth and Jupiter were on the same side of the Sun, and so light from Io merely had to propagate to Earth this far. The second time was when our Earth and Jupiter were on the opposite sides of the Sun and light from Io had to get all the way over here to Earth. The period of Jupiter is approximately 12 Earth years, so in the six months necessary for Earth to go on the opposite side of the Sun, the location of Jupiter is essentially unmoved. It appeared to Romer that the second eclipse lasted about 10 minutes longer than the first, and that simply reflects the light from Io simply had to go further the distance across Earth's diameter of orbit to, to reach the Earth. If we call that distance L, then this time lag for the apparent difference in eclipse times is L over C, and that 10 minutes represents then as a measurement of the speed of light. Maxwell proposed a change on this measurement where he now supposed that the, the Sun and the entire solar system is moving at a speed v through the ether. If we repeat Romer's measurements now not just six months apart, but also six years apart, so that at a later time Jupiter is sending light to us from the opposite directions, in other words from over here over to Earth, or over here over to Earth, then sometimes the light is heading from upstream in the ether this way when Jupiter is on this side and sometimes the light is coming from downstream in the ether when it's coming from the other side. Light approaching the Earth from upwind would be approaching at speed v plus c relative to Earth. Light approaching from downwind in the ether would be traveling at speed v minus c relative to Earth. The time lag would be L over V plus C when Jupiter is over here, sending, Earth to, sending light to Earth here and here. 
but would be L over V minus C for this case when Jupiter is on the left side. Remember that times T1 and T2 are the time lags for the apparent eclipse of the moon Io, which actually requires making two measurements six months apart and comparing them. And now those two measurements have to be made six years apart and, and tested as, as to whether or not they're different. Let's compare these two time lags in Io's eclipses. That will be a, a time difference delta T between T2 and T1. T2 is L over V minus C, T1 is L over V plus C. Finding a common denominator, that becomes C squared minus V squared. And the difference is 2LV over C squared minus V squared. V is only 20 kilometers per second, perhaps as large as 50 kilometers per second, depending on which planet's velocity around the sun you want to take as a typical astronomical velocity. But in any case, that speed is quite a bit less than the measured speed of light. So we can approximate that this is roughly 2LV over C squared. That's equal to 2 times T naught, the original speed time difference measured by Romer about 10 minutes. And if V over C is approximately 10 to the minus 4, and T naught is 16 minutes, which is a currently accepted value, then delta T is one second. In other words, by taking a set of four measurements acquired over a period of 12 years, or six years, excuse me, the delta T there would be approximately one second, which is not all that much. At this point, David Todd tells Maxwell that his thought experiment will be hopeless and it will be difficult to measure a speed relative to the ether using this Romer's technique extrapolated to the case when there's a, an ether and the solar system is moving through it. Clearly at this point a better strategy needs to be found.